I just wanted to talk about a couple more questions that I'm always getting asked in the comments when I'm talking about virtual desktop. One of those is, can you just use a USB Wi-Fi adapter in the front of your computer or back of your computer and create a hotspot in Windows 10 and connect your Quest to the hotspot for what sounds like a nice, fast, direct connection. Uh, and not only the USB way, but you can get PCI Express cards, Wi-Fi cards that will do the same thing. And I keep telling people in the comments, no, this isn't the best way to do it. Because people say, oh, you don't need a router. You could do it this way, Carl. You could just put your USB Wi-Fi card in and you could put your PCI Express Wi-Fi card in. Now, Guy Godin, the developer of Virtual Desktop, specifically advises not to do this. And I have tried. I bought a £75 Asus PCI Express Wi-Fi 6 card, nice high spec one, and it worked like crap. I was barely getting, I was like two meters from the PC, right? It has two nice external aerials, lovely looking piece of kit, great, I'm sure, for what it's designed to do. But it isn't designed to constantly run a Quest 2, nor is it designed to have what I think is that, that continual flow of um, upstream traffic. You know, typically, if you're using a laptop or a PC wirelessly, you're connected to the internet and you are perhaps streaming things down to your PC. You're downloading files, you're checking your emails, you're browsing the internet, you're watching YouTube. You're not usually continuously streaming as much compressed bandwidth video up to a device as you possibly can. And that is, of course, what we're doing when we're connecting Virtual Desktop to our Quest 2s. So I think maybe, and this is pure speculation, I think maybe that's why Guy Godin recommends a standalone router versus a PCI Express Wi-Fi card or a USB dongle, because routers are designed to have traffic flowing in both directions continuously and over multiple devices, especially if you buy a good one. That is literally their sole purpose in life. Um, and you buy a good one and it does the job really well. So in his testing, the USB and the PCI Express options didn't work well. In my testing, my expensive PCI Express card that I now have absolutely no use for and can't return because I've opened it, um, didn't work well either. And the problems I was actually having even though it was um, 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6, it was only giving me, for some reason, 600 to 800 megabit per second connection in the top left-hand corner of virtual desktop. And I spent ages trying to figure out why this was. Obviously, I made sure I had the up-to-date drivers and I went through the, the options in Device Manager and I set it to 802.11ax and blah, 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 all the things you would do to try and get the most out of it. And the connection was just piss poor. I had to move the bit rate all the way down in virtual desktop, and even then, the frame rate wasn't consistent, and obviously, it looked like crap. So I thought, well, that will teach me for not taking the advice of the developer. You know, the Guy's developed this software. He's tried everything there is to try. He wants us all to have the best experience and without having to invest the, the, mo the least amount of money without having to invest more money than we need to. So if you could buy a cheap USB dongle or a cheap PCI Express card and do that, he would say, go buy a cheap USB dongle or go buy a cheap PCI Express card. He wouldn't say, use a dedicated router because that just, you know, it's a barrier to entry. If you've got to spend more money, it puts people off. So in spite of his advice, I got one, I tried it, it didn't work. Now, in the comments on my previous videos, some of you guys have said you've used USB adapters and PCI Express Wi-Fi cards, and you do have a good experience. Now, I'm not doubting you, because there's so many possible hardware configurations out there, you know, different dongles, different PCI Express cards, maybe a couple of you have been lucky and landed ones that do work well. But again, from Guy Godin's point of view, he can't focus on the couple of people who it does work well for. He needs to focus on the majority so that he doesn't get bucket loads of people saying, oh, it just doesn't work, it works terribly, blah, 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 what a load of rubbish. He needs it to work for the masses. And so his advice and my advice is don't grab a PCI Express card, especially not an expensive one that you now can't use. Don't buy a USB dongle, because that we all know USB dongles are gonna be the worst of the worst in reality, especially Amazon and eBay ones. Go buy yourself 
I did a video recommending a few TP-Link routers. Now, some of you guys in the States, there's a, a, a thread on the TP-Link support forum where some of you are having problems with the TP-Link Archer AX10 and AX20 not being particularly fluid or stable. Um, I've used both, I use both of those every day here in my house and they work flawlessly. And other people in the comments from the UK are saying theirs work fine as well. So we're thinking maybe it's a US firmware update that you guys have had for some reason that we haven't that's causing you problems. So if you are in the US and you've seen my previous video, I, I don't say be cautious, but if you're going to buy an Archer X10 or X20, buy it from somewhere where you can return it, like Amazon, with like no questions asked, because it might be that it works for you okay, like it does for us guys in the UK, but it might also be that it doesn't. Um, and I don't think TP-Link are going to be particularly forthcoming with trying to fix this, because it's a very specific niche problem. People playing virtual reality, using virtual desktop with a Quest 2, we're narrowing the the scope of people this applies to down and down and down and down. And I don't think it's going to be high on TP-Link's list of priorities, is it? So just bear that in mind if you have seen my previous video and you are in the US, buy it from somewhere you can return it to just in case you have problems. Um, but again, those of you perhaps that haven't seen that, uh, I'll put linked in the description to the TP-Link routers that I use here every day, one upstairs, one downstairs for two Quest 2s, and they do work flawlessly. Um, for me, so I can definitely recommend them. But um, yeah, I think that probably answers the, the questions that you guys have been asking, which is can you use a PCI Express Wi-Fi card and can you use a USB Wi-Fi dongle? The answer is no, for the most part. Don't dick around, don't waste your time. If you happen to have one kicking about, by all means, give it a go, because a couple of people in the comments do seem to be having some success. But for the majority of us, do what Guy Godin suggests and buy a nice Wi-Fi 6 router for not too much money, 60 to 70 pounds, um, and you'll be golden. So I think that's about it. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.